Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at a knife from Ganzo. This is the FB727S. This is the little brother of the G727M. I think they put it out as the F727M as well. Um, I'll give you a very brief history. Uh, Ganzo uh, had a number of series, but initially when I got started in uh, doing videos, which is a little over four years ago, their series then was the G series. Their, the name was Ganzo, no other name, no Firebird, nothing else. Ganzo and their knives were G and then three numbers. And uh, then they started adding letters. This is the G727M. And you can get it with G10 handle scales, and for a while they had wood, and so I've kept the one with wood. Uh, I've sold off all the other ones that had the G10. And of course, this is a uh, almost copy of the Ontario uh, rat knives, the one and the two. Uh, this one is sort of between the one and the two in terms of sizes, the G727M. And... Um, you can watch my review on this, although it's a very old review. It's not up to my current standards, but, you know, this is the knife. And they put in the Axis Lock. They called it the G-Lock back then. And I've reviewed this, and you can see it. And now the FB727S is the small. So this was M for medium, S for small. And this one's very close to the size of the Ontario Rat 2. And this is a little bit smaller than the Ontario Rat 1 if you will. And I've got an Ontario Rat 1 to do some size comparisons in a minute. So, this knife is what we're going to look at today. Uh, I'm still feeling very much under the weather with my major health issues. So, as the last video I did, I'm going to do very light editing. So, excuse me if you're going to be seeing issues and some problems and some stuff that I probably should have edited out, you know, to make it flow better or whatever. It's going to be the same review, just with less editing. Uh, same standard as I always do, just, like I said, less editing. So let's put this on the tabletop and take a good look at it. Let's start off with a size comparison. So this is the uh, 727S, 727M, also by Ganzo. Back then, you know, they were using the hammer inside the nut logo. And uh, there's the model number, but I don't expect you to see that. The, this one, you know, very same thing, a little bit smaller. There's a bigger spoon on the pocket clip on this one than there is on that one. But the layout for everything is very much the same. Uh, the engagement of the access lock has been improved over time. The G, G series was okay. It was actually a pretty good lock. Uh, but some people wanted the lock bar arm to go further up on the tang of the blade. So when they did the F series of knives, uh, they adjusted the axis lock and made it engage more. And this one engages very, very well. You can see right there that highly polished spot. It's well on the tang. So that's a very good. I did a whack test on a lot of these where, you know, I held the knife and I whacked the back of the spine very, very hard. And, you know, I've done over 100 Ganzo reviews. None of them failed. I didn't whack test every single one, but I did a lot of them. But what's this? This is basically a copy of the Ontario Rat series of knives. Uh, the Ontario Rat's a liner lock, and it came with AUS-8 steel. Uh, they then came out with D2 steel, and now they've got D2 on the Rat 2 as well. So if we take a look at these knives, uh, let's do them spine to spine. Uh, by the way, some people might ask what this is. Uh, that is a... Oh, and I can't remember off the top of my head right now what the name of that is. I'll put it on the screen. They're fairly expensive, but it's really cool that, you know, it acts like a wave feature so that you pull it out of your pocket and the blade gets deployed, or you can use it as, you know, a thumb stud, you know, as well. So this knife, if we line it up at the tip right there, the tips are together, and then we sort of bring them back together as much as possible. As you can see, very much the same size. It's just a little bit shorter. The main difference is you've got a flat section here to do, you know, your finger grab up here, your thumbs in there. That works very well. It works okay on this knife, 
not great, but it works okay on this knife. It doesn't work that well on this one because it's just a little bit too small. You grab there and your finger goes on the cutting edge. Well, at least mine does most times. Even on the Rat 2, you, you still have that section on it that this one does not have. So there's the size comparison to that one. This one's definitely smaller. You know, if we put the pivot pins together, um, you can see it's definitely, you know, a smaller knife <laughs> in every way, shape, and form. The first thing you're going to ask me, is this a three inch blade? Well, you might have seen on the some of the websites for these knives that it says 3.07 inches. Um, I got close. Yeah, I got, actually, actually got that. My cutting edge on this one's 3.07 uh, but the blade length, the closest spot on the G10 to the tip is actually 3.06 on this one. And that's a beef. That's a big con. Uh, Ganzo, that is a huge con because this knife is going to get, if a people that live in a jurisdiction where they are only allowed to have three inch knives, they can get themselves into trouble with this knife. If you would have just taken it and shortened it down by, you know, an eighth of an inch, then everybody would be very safe and you'd have very much the same knife. That being said, if somebody has one of these knives and they want me to adjust it for them, I can make it just a little bit shorter for you. Uh, I'll probably be willing to sell this knife. Uh, let's see, this is May, so I have to wait until the end of May, beginning of June. Like by the middle of June, I might be willing to sell it if it didn't go to the Patreon winner, that is. And you know, I doubt that it'll go to the Patreon winner because I've got a number of better knives that they're going to choose from. Anyhow, the same shape as the interior rat, except for it's only a tip-up pocket clip, right and left, very much the same way that this is. I don't like this pocket clip that far down, but you know, they did it the same way as the interior rat. The same general shape, the same same thumb riser there with jimping, thumb studs as well, the same blade shape. Um, here's a close-up that I'll show you. They didn't put in a sharpener's choil. And when they grind the knife to sharpen it, they grind into the plunge. On both sides, they ground into the plunge. This side's not quite as bad as this side. That's why I like sharpener's toil. Just because the company that you're copying didn't put in a sharpener's toil, you know, doesn't mean you can't. Uh, you can see, Ontario makes it very well. They sharpen it just up to that plunge line, and their plunger line is straight up and down, whereas this one's on an angle coming down. So it is a budget knife though and you'll be surprised when I tell you the price of this and I'll do that a little bit later. Drop point blade, full flat grind, no sharpener's toil uh, and then a handle that's very very comfortable. That's the main thing that Ontario did right with that uh, uh, rat knife. Uh, but by the way some people who are newer to knives don't know what rat means. It's Randall's Adventure in Training. That's the group of people who designed this. Randall's Adventure in Training. That's why it's called RAT, R-A-T. So it's a very, very comfortable knife in hand. This one's a little bit small for me because uh, my hands are between large and extra large in North American sizes. Uh, so it's a little bit small, but I can still use it very comfortably, very secure. You know, the pinky might not have much of a grip, but my three fingers and my thumb get a very good grip on this knife. Um, you know, a reverse grip is comfortable. A reverse pull grip is comfortable. You know, pinch grip for a close-up. It's a very comfortable knife. Nice um, texture on the G10 for a little bit of extra grip. A, the access lock, the uh, the bar that you pull back, it's nicely rounded and yet there's a little bit lines in there so it's good traction to undo the lock when you want to. I've not used this one very much but uh, I can still do the flip out and flip in and what I'm doing is I'm pulling back on the access lock and that releases it to swing and there's ball bearings in here and then you let go just as it closes and then it stays closed. There, there's a spring inside here and I'll show you a picture of either this one taken apart or this one taken apart. I'm not sure which one but it's the exact same type of spring on both of them. A spring goes around the big stud of the bar and it curls around and into the liners. As I take this apart, I want to tell you it does have a pivot pin that is not free spinning. This side's locked, so you can't turn it, which I wish they would not have put, you know, a screw head there then, because some people are going to try to undo the knife and they're going to strip that out. It's on this side, the same side as the pocket clip comes originally. 
and you can take that out. There's some white uh, uh, thread locker in there. And um, yeah, I'll take it off this side, which means I've got to take off all of these screws here. So I'm going to speed up this part of the video. These are all T6. That was a T8. So there you go. That's what the knife looks like on the inside. Let's close up a little bit. Let's do a little close up here. So there you go. There's that spring. It sits in there. We can take it out to show you. See, it's got a little bent over section. There's a little bit of a bend there and it hooks onto. Whoops, I got to get back in the focus. <laughs> that hook hooks onto the uh, lock bar arm and that little bend goes into that little hole right there. And that's what powers this knife. And uh, let's put that back in. There you go. And I've got a video about how to make this spring stronger or lighter if uh, it's not a good tension for what you like. There's that little line there, a flat line across there. That's the D-shaped pivot pin so it doesn't freely spin in there. And the skeletonizing. It's a very simple knife. And if I take this side off, I'm going to have fun trying to get it back together. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, the liners, there's some skeletonizing on these liners. Uh, I'm not going to take this knife all the way apart because the knives with access locks, they can be, let's call it interesting and sarcastically fun uh, to put back together. And I'm just not in a good mental space right now to do that. I don't want to be putting it back together. But it's a very good functioning lock. Works very well. It only comes in a satin finish on this and um, steel backspacers, not backspacers, steel uh, pillars, uh, pins for the construction. It does not have a backspacer. And um, I think it's a good knife. 440C stainless steel, like I was saying. Uh, this is OS 8 or D2 now. I like 440C better than OS 8. I don't know if I like D2 better than 440C. Uh, I don't know, but I like 440C quite a lot. It's actually a very good knife steel. Uh, back around the Second World War, 440C was the super steel. And uh, so it's a good steel. It's just that there are some much better steels these days as well. Rockwell hardness on this is around 58, give or take. Um, I think I mentioned all the other parts to it. Uh, there's no blade play, side to side, up and down. So that's really good. I'm not going to show you the ball bearings because, like I said, I'm not going to take it all the way apart. Um, uh, blade centering, it's just a tiny bit off to the side. doesn't rub anywhere, not even close, so that's a good thing. Uh, let's go over all of the dimensions and those specs, and I'll do that. This will be on the screen the whole time I'm talking specs. The weight of this knife, 80 grams, 2.8 ounces. The factory sharpness, 170 bests. Uh, 200 and lower is considered a sharp knife. The length of the cutting edge, 7.79 centimeters, 3.07 inches. The length of the blade tipped to the closest spot on the handle, 7.77 centimeters, 3.06 inches. The blade thickness, and I measured back here on the flat section, not up here. Back here on this flat section, I've got 2.68 millimeters, which is 0 0.1055 inches. So definitely less than an eighth of an inch, but it's not super thin at all. And the taper begins almost right away, and it slowly tapers. And then for the last inch or so, the taper uh, gets more dramatic till it gets to the fine tip right there. The blade depth, that's this measurement, and I go an inch up from the you know, plunge here because there's no sharpness trial. That is 2.29 centimeters, 0 0.902 of an inch. The thickness of the edge of the steel behind the grind, again, about an inch up is where I measure it, 0.52 millimeters. That's uh, 20 and a half thousandths of an inch. So that's a very good thinness behind the grind. I like it that way. Uh, every time you sharpen it, that's going to get thicker on a full flat grind. 
so I don't like it to be thicker to start with. The grind angle, um, let's see if I get it right. Yep, this side, the grind angle is 15.2. This side, the grind angle, 20.4. But that's just in this main section where you cut the most. The grind angle changes. It get, uh, uh, On this side, it gets flatter here and then steeper there. Um, Ganzo's often that way, like where the grind alternates and it moves around. Uh, so that's why it's good to know how to sharpen knives yourself. I would sharpen this and give it a consistent 20 degree angle on both sides. Uh, let's talk about the handle dimensions. The length of the handle, 10.55 centimeters, 4.15 inches. The grip area, and with everything being rounded here, this is an approximate, it's around nine centimeters, about three and a half inches in the grip area. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.17 centimeters, that's 0.459 of an inch. So it's a good thickness, very, very typical. The handle depth, it's biggest right here, 2.42 centimeters, 0.953 of an inch. The knife depth when the blade is closed is biggest right here, 3.13 centimeters, 1.233 of an inch. And the total length of the knife when the blade is deployed, it's 18.2 centimeters, 7.19 inches. So it is a smaller knife to be sure. How much does this cost? Power Cutlery has these in stock for $15.99, that's US dollars. They got this in black, in that bluish gray kind of color, and in this camo color. And they've got it with the carbon fiber laminate, but that's uh, $17.59 US. Amazon has this knife for $23.95 in several of those colors, that's Amazon.com. I've not seen it in other stores. Uh, if you shop at uh, Power Cutlery, your, the very first time that you shop there, uh, no, let me rephrase this. The first time you use the coupon code that I'm going to tell you about, you can get 5% 5 off of all of their Ganzo products. However many Ganzo products you buy that time, you can get 5% off of the Ganzo products. When you use coupon code CCE in lowercase, you can only use it once. So make it worth it, grab a number of knives. If you didn't see my unboxing on the very newest FH81, their newest D2 steel knife, that thing is cool and I'll be reviewing it soon. It's a very fun kind of knife and quite functional too. The unique features about this knife, well, there's nothing very much unique on it since it is pretty much a copy, except for they put in an access lock instead of a liner lock. Other than that, it's very much not unique at all. We've got uh, G10 on the handle scales. Like I said, they're good. Uh, just going over the pros and cons is what I'm doing here. I like this texture on here. Decent grip. You can grip it many different ways. You've got a few color choices. Uh, there's no hot spots anywhere. The pocket clip doesn't create any hot spots. Uh, the lanyard holes, a uh, big enough size for 550 paracord, no problem. It's got a nice design, thanks to Randall Knife, Randall uh, Adventure and Training. I like this thumb riser that they designed in there, and the jimping on here is quite good, not too aggressive. Uh, just good enough to get your finger locked in there. And um, I like that it's right and left friendly. And the cons, they should have made the blade just a little bit shorter. Come on, Ganzo. Um, I would have liked the sharpness choil, or they should have copied the plunge that uh, they have on the Ontario knife, a straight down plunge instead of an angled plunge. Uh, I might put a sharpness choil in this one if I keep it, or if somebody who buys it asks me to. I've done that before. I've got a video on how to make a sharpness choil. Um, I've also got videos on how to make detents softer on liner locks and frame locks, or firmer for that matter stronger. Uh, another con is uh, the grind, very uneven. I wish they would have been consistent with the grind angle all the way across. Uh, they sharpen these by hand. There's a rotating wheel turning in front of us. Imagine there's a wheel standing on edge right here and it's coming down and they, they sharpen it by hand across that. And so if they're wiggling like this a little bit, you know, doing some movement while they're going across, it's going to sharpen poorly. And that's what I think is happening with Ganzo's knives. It's not terrible, but 
they could be doing better. Okay, and that's about it. I don't have an Ontario Rat 2 to compare this to directly, but you've got more cutting edge than an Ontario Rat 2 has, uh, but you've got less space in here for your finger. Uh, the handle is very much the same size as an Ontario Rat 2, and um, and now you can get the Ontario Rat 2 with AUS 8 or D2. Um, if you don't want D2, um, I would say get the Ganso because 440C is better, in my opinion, than AUS 8. And you get more cutting edge, and it costs a fair bit less. You know, it's not quite half the price of a, of a Ontario Rat 2, but it's a lot cheaper for sure. Another thing, the Ontario Rat uh, has got FRN. These are G10, or there's the G10 with the carbon fiber laminate. And um, if you like liner locks, then you'll like the original. If you like the style of access lock, or Ganzo calls it a G-lock, then you're going to like this knife better. So I'm not telling you to buy a knife. I'm not even trying to sell you a knife. What I'm trying to do with these videos is give you as much information as I can so that you can decide for yourself what you want to get. And then if I've got access to discounts, I want to make those available to you. One thing I want to show you before we finish off the video is how does the pocket clip work in the pocket? How does it look when it's there? So let's do that. The spoon slides over the edge of the pants very easily, slides in right to the bottom, and there you go. How far does it stick out of the pocket? You're looking at about half an inch. That's not bad. That's uh, about a centimeter and a half, a centimeter and two thirds, roughly. And then when you want to grab the knife, you know, those three screw heads come in handy to give you a little bit of extra grip to uh, pull it out. Works very well. So there you go. Please take the time to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell so you'll be notified of any videos when they come up. And uh, I thank you so much for watching. Remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.